All righty. Looks like we might be live. Let me see if I can get the video to come up for me as well. All righty, and we are. Hi, everybody. This is Tamara from Moogly, learning a little bit of a new tech system this morning, but very happy to finally be with you live. So a little bit later than we'd planned. If you were waiting, thank you so much for your patience. Always an adventure getting all the technology to line up just right, right? So let's get to it. Today, I'm here to talk about the Tunisian Pebbles Stitch, which is a really fun um, stitch pattern. It's just a little bit of a twist on the Tunisian Simple Stitch, which is really probably the first Tunisian stitch you learn. Once you learn that foundation row, Tunisian Simple Stitch is usually the next step, uh, kind of like learning single crochet or, uh, well, how to knit, I suppose. But it's, it's the basic stitch, and it's got two parts. You've got a forward pass and a return pass. So the Tunisian Pebble Stitch is a twist on the return pass, you know, which a lot of people think of as just pull through, pull through, and finish off. It's the return pass that has the action for this one and creates a really great texture. So let's go ahead and go to the overhand camera. Fingers crossed it works. This has been a little bit of the holdup today is getting everything to work just right. So let's see. And I've got a little delay too. So you might be looking at it right now and I just need to catch up. We'll give it a second here. There we go. Okay, now I can see it and I can see we're going. This is the Tunisian Pebbles dishcloth. Let me get that centered. This is a free pattern that you'll find on mooglyblog.com. This is the PDF for it that's also available. But you can see, if I hold it up here hopefully, there's some really great texture to this dishcloth and that comes from the Tunisian Pebbles stitch. I want to point out too that if you do choose to get the PDF or if you go to the blog, there are some step-by-step -step photos available for that too. So hi everybody. Hi, thanks so much for tuning in live. I really appreciate it. So here we have the small sample that I've started working on. Like I say, this isn't, I was uh, just in Facebook Live talking about this a little bit. I have the basics of Tunisian, uh, Tunisian foundation rows and simple stitch um, already up on YouTube. So today I wanted to dive right into the Tunisian pebble stitch. So I've got all my loops pulled up here for my little washcloth. 20 loops for the washcloth size. You could make this stitch pattern, let me just double check it, any multiple of two. As long as you start with a multiple of two, you can use this stitch. So that's our stitch multiple for this one. But like I say, for this one, all the action happens on the return pass. So we've got our loops pulled up here, just Tunisian simple stitch regular loops. And now we're going to do that return pass. And we'll do a couple of these, because as you can see, these are offset. And then you'll see me do that forward pass as well. So let's just jump right on into it with return pass here. Now it's going to start just like most return passes, where we yarn over and pull through just that first loop and then yarn over and pull through two loops. So far, so standard, but this is where it gets fun. Now we're going to do a chain three. We're just going to go right through, let me see if I can get a little closer there, right through that first loop, and we'll chain one, two, and three. There we go. So you can see I've made a chain of three right there in between that pull through and that next loop. Now what we're going to do is yarn over and pull through two loops twice. So once, twice. So they've got that big chain three loop just hanging out there right now and that's totally fine. For now we just leave that hanging out. But now we do it again. Chain three, one, two, three, Kind of, I know I have to put my thumb on there, but that's the best way I can find to really kind of anchor down those stitches. Then we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So let's do that a few more times here together. For this pattern, I am using sort of this beautiful lime color of Lily Sugar and Cream. And this is a six millimeter US 10 Susan Bates Tunisian crochet hook. So I just need to pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. There we are, alrighty, and now we're ready to begin again. We've done our pull through two, and you can always go back and check. We wanna have those two vertical bars right there, and then we chain again. One, two, three, then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Chain one, two, three, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, 
and pull through two. And we just keep doing that all the way across. One, two, three. Then yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You can see how that's looking kind of crazy right now. It'll all work out when we make the next forward pass. One, two, three chains, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Just a few more to go here. Two and three chains. Hi everybody, thanks so much for following along. Yarn over and pull through two twice. One, two, three again. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now this is what would be our row two repeat or our first row of our pebble stitch repeat. So we should have three stitches left here. We're gonna do one more set of chains. Our three chains there. And then yarn over and pull through two. And yarn over and pull through two. That leaves us with one loop left on our hook, which will be the first stitch for our next forward pass. So you can see this is what it looks like here. Little, kind of almost looks like a little crown at this point with all these big loops. It always reminds me a little bit of a tiara or something. But those loops are going to form those little bobbles, if you will. They're not really officially bobbles, but the little bits that stick out. We're going, the pebbles, I guess we should be calling them. So we're going to want to make sure we push those loops forward as we make our next forward pass. So our next forward pass is going to be just Tunisian simple stitch, but we really need to make sure we get all those little loops. We wanna make sure we get both of those in each of those sets of two. So we've got that first loop on our hook because this is Tunisian. So there's our second loop right there. We're just gonna go under that front loop just like a Tunisian simple stitch and pull up our next loop. There we are. Then we've come to that chain three. So we wanna push that forward just out of our way. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer yet here and keep it in focus here. We're gonna push that forward and I like to lay my hook kind of right on top of it like that Oop, when I go into that next stitch and pull up that loop. And if it gets a little caught, you can literally just give it a little tug, but that's all there is to it. It's just a chain three that's pushed forward. So we go into the next stitch, pull up our Tunisian simple stitch. We've come to another chain three. So we just wanna put our hook right, Oop, let me get centered again there. It went off camera a little bit, sorry about that. That delay gets me every time. There we go. So now we just lay our hook right over the top. Make sure we can find our next set of stitches there, but lay your hook right over the top of that chain three to push it down. And then we can find that next loop to go into here, our next vertical loop. There we are, one and two. And with Tunisia, I always like to stop every few stitches and just give it a little tug, make sure my loops are up nice and high, and in this case, that these loops are nice and down low. And then we can go to the next one. Just lay our hook right over the top. Straighten out our stitches if we need to. Find those next two vertical bars that we want to go into. Squish down that chain three to in front. If he wants to pop up over, you can just really use your fingers and push it all the way down there, out of the way. There we go. Sometimes they want to put up a little bit of a fight. And we've got our second one. Don't forget, we want to have two loops in between each one of those little bobbles or pebbles. So we can push that next one down. Find that next loop. Pull up our next loop. And we just continue that all the way across. You'll see, I, I like to use my thumbnail to kind of help get under those loops sometimes. They want to hide from me a little bit, so I'll use my nail to sort of meet the loop on the other, or the hook from the other side here. But that is it. The only difference then, the only thing we need to get through this one for is because when we do our next return pass to do our next set of pebbles, we want to make sure that they are offset. You'll see how they're not all just lined up on top of each other. So we need to offset it a little bit for the return pass for this uh, next row here. So it's on the forward pass for the next row that you really start seeing those pebbles actually kind of show up as pebbles and not as big chain three loops. And that's kind of one of the things about Tunisian crochet. It's the next row really defines the row you're working on. 
So I've come all the way to that last one. Now, anytime I work in Tunisian, when I wrote this pattern, I was still relatively new to Tunisian, but now I would say definitely you want to make sure to go under the two loops on the side for your last stitch. Officially, that would be a Tunisian knit stitch, but it just gives you a much nicer edge right there. And then we should have our 20 loops back on our hook. It's always a good idea to check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We've got all our loops. So now we've got our second return pass row. So this is the one that's going to be just a little bit different so that we offset these little pebbles. So for this one, we still started out the same way. Yarn over and pull through the first loop. Start a standard Tunisian return pass. Then yarn over and pull through the two loops twice. When we did the previous return pass, we just did that once before we started making those pebbles. Now we're going to do it twice. And if you look closely, you can see that will put that chain three right in between those two pebbles. So now we know we're in the right spot. Chain three again. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Chain three again. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And it's just the same thing all the way to get to the end. And of course, the, we'll have a slightly different number of stitches there at the end. So let's try and get there together relatively quickly. Chain three, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Chain three again, one, two, three. Pull up some more yarn from our skein here. There we are. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, chain three, one, two, three, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're just working our way all the way across. So yes, this is a beautiful stitch pattern for uh, dish claws. I love it, very scrubby, but I think it's also just a lot of fun for, you know, anything. You could do a really fun um, blanket, I think, in some large scale yarn. The hardest part would just be finding the larger scale Tunisian hooks. So it looks like there I just pulled through one. We've got one loop there, so we want to make sure we pull through again. So we've got those two. So now we yarn over and pull through our chain, do our chain three here. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. That leaves us with these two last loops on our hook, and that's fine because this is our offset row. So we just need to do that one more time to finish this row. Then the return pass is exactly the same. We've got our first loop on our hook, so we find that next, or excuse me, the forward pass, I should say. We go under there, pull up our next loop. We had an extra stitch there at the end because it was our offset row, so we pull up that loop. And then the same thing. We just push down that chain three, find the next loop there that we can go under, and pull up our loop. Make sure our little pebble is sticking out nice in front, and that's it. Another forward pass of Tunisian Simple Stitch, and then we're back to the first, first set we did, where we just yarn over and pull through two once before we start making those chain threes, and that will keep that really offset. So here we'll get a little bit closer so you can really see, hopefully, what that texture looks like right here. Make sure, there we are. I had to wait for the delay to catch up with me. So you can see that's what those little chain threes just create this really gorgeous texture. It reminds me of, peb it's called pebble stitch, so it reminds me a little bit of pebbles, of course, but it also reminds me a little bit of a really subtle scale pattern. Um, I think if you could have a lot of fun with amigurumi with this stitch. And then this is what it looks like from the back. I always like to show, especially with Tunisian, because it's so different what it looks like from behind. It almost looks like it's a knitted piece or something from behind. But in behind, you don't have those pebbles. It's a little bumpy but it's kind of just a, almost looks like a garter stitch knit piece right there. So um, yes, Carlene, making washcloths to practice new stitches, absolutely a favorite of mine. Um, people complain about making gauge swatches. I'm like, well, just make it, make it dishcloth sized and boom, you've got a dishcloth. You know, when you're making um, a swatch just to practice a stitch, absolutely make it out of cotton and you've got a great dishcloth there for you. Um, Diane says, I made a Santa Claus beard using bobbles, but this would be so much easier. Yes, that would be so much fun. Um, I could see all sorts of, you know, great Tunisian projects. You can make this really fun 3D stitch. And like I say, there's just something fun about it when the loops are up there, too. It reminds me a little bit of a kind of a funky little tiara almost. And that makes me happy as well. So that is how to make the Tunisian pebble stitch. We'll go ahead and 
switch back to the other camera, I think, for today. Um, thank you again so much for joining us for this tutorial. Um, again, the Tunisian Pebbles dishcloth is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. If you go to the link uh, in the description for this video, you will find a link to that pattern, as well as links to all the other cool things happening on Moogly and the upcoming Michaels classes that I'll be teaching live um, and everything else that's going on, including some giveaways and other fun things. So I hope you'll check that out. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye, everybody.